All right, so let's get into it. So number one I've got today is have open and proactive communication. Have open and proactive communication. And, and really the principle that I, the, the verse that I always think about when I think about communication within any relationship, because the, these principles that I'm sharing with you to do with marriage really can apply to any relationship, right? They can apply to, to friends, with your children, with, with um, you know, colleagues and family. It's just that it's more important that you apply these principles in a marriage because you're with that person a lot more often. Right? You're living with that person. With, so it, it's, it's in your best interest that you have peace and you have a peaceful marriage because you're seeing that person every day, day in and day out, right? Um, and you're living with this person as opposed to maybe friends and family that you see only every now and then. Um, and children where, you know, they, they, they're, uh, I suppose, they're not a, an adult uh, and they're not, uh, they, they don't think like an adult. So, you know, it's easy for them to just go along and be peaceful um, where you don't have to really proactively apply um, principles to make a relationship work because children are very, you know, very easy to please. So um, have open and proactive communication. I just want to show you this verse here in Amos 3, verse 3. It says here, can two walk together except they be agreed. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So what is that verse saying? It's saying, can two people, you know, be partnered up? Can two people go in the same direction? Can they walk together? Can they work together unless they have agreement? And because we're not God, you know, we're not God, we can't read a person's heart, right? We can't, we can't know what somebody's thinking. We can't read their mind. We can't know what their thoughts are. So we have to talk to one another. You know, that's the only way. You remember when we talked about salvation? How, how is our faith expressed? How are our thoughts expressed? Through words. So if we're not willing to communicate, you know, our thoughts, communicate our feelings, communicate our emotions, communicate our ideals and our beliefs, how do we expect our partner to know what we're thinking? How do we expect our, our spouse to know how we feel? You know, and especially with ladies, right? I mean, ladies, you can't just assume that your husband just knows how you feel. You know, you can't just say, well, you should know this. You should know that this upset me. You should know that this bugs me. No, he shouldn't know because he doesn't know your heart. He can't read your mind. Um, you know, men, I guess, don't have this problem so much because men are happy to speak their mind. Where I guess stereotypically women, uh, it's a bit, probably a bit harder for them. You know, women are known to give the silent treatment. You know, if you want to have not a peaceful relationship, if you want to hinder your marriage, then give your husband the silent treatment. But if you want to have a good marriage, you know, you need to, you need to learn to, to speak your mind and you need to learn to uh, express yourself. So what does open and proactive communication look like? Um, well, to me, it means you talk about everything. And I, li and I literally mean everything. And you might be thinking, you know, even that, should I even talk to my husband about that, this thought that I'm having right now? Yes. You know, and you may not be ready to talk to him about it now, but, you know, it, it's not just saying that we all just need to be, you know, whenever we give these principles, it's not just saying that you need to be there right now. But you need to be growing to that. You know, you need to, I think you need to get to the point. And obviously, when it comes to principles, you know, we have the principle here that can two walk together except they be agreed. You know, talking about communication, obviously how we apply that is our own conv convictions and preferences. So obviously I'm sharing with you, um, you know, just the wisdom that I believe I have gotten over the years. But these are, you know, these are my preferences. This is what I think is good for a marriage. Um, and I, and when, I say, when, when I say I think it's good to talk about everything, I literally mean everything. And there may be, you know, maybe skeletons in your closet or things that you um, think, oh, is this appropriate to talk about? You know, these are things that are dark and I've kept secret for a long time. I, I personally think, you know, you should talk about those things. Because if, 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 if you really want to get to know your husband or your wife, you know, this is part of, part of getting to know them, is opening up and letting them know everything about you. Um, so I literally mean everything. Um, so, so first of all, you know, talk about the Bible. So what does this look like? Talk about the Bible. You know, discuss doctrine. Um, you know, share insights. You know, read, read the Bible together. I mean, you may not necessarily read it aloud together, but, you know, have times, you know, usually me and my wife, you know, we'll be sitting in bed before we go to sleep and we're reading the Bible. And this is why in our church, 
I did this read through the Bible together because I felt as though it, it helped communication. It kept everyone on the same page because it was something that me and my wife did. And when we came across certain verses that we didn't understand, we would talk about it. And because we were reading through the Bible at the same pace, we would be at the same verses. So when I said, hey, what did you think about this chapter or this verse? She had read it as well and maybe had some thoughts and we would talk about it and we would discuss things. So, you know, talk about the Bible together, you know, figure things out together. And if, you know, if, you're, if your spouse is, is really into a certain doctrine or into, 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 into the Bible and studying it, you know, I've heard people say things like, oh, you know, my, my husband or my wife, they're so obsessed with the Bible. Why is that something that you'd complain about? I mean, that's, that's, that's a good thing. Like, you want, I mean, you want to be obsessed about the Bible. You want to be obsessed about the Word. So if your husband or your spouse, or, your, or if your husband or your wife is obsessed about the Bible and wants to talk about doctrine, wants to figure doctrine out, I mean, that's the last thing you want to do is discourage that. You know, you want to encourage that. You know, take that as an opportunity to learn and help them to grow and cultivate that love uh, for the Word of God. So it's a good thing. You know, you want them to be obsessed with the Bible. What would you prefer them to be obsessed about? You know, I've got some things that, you know, sports, cars, you know, you know, would you prefer your wife to be obsessed about clothing? Or, you know, material possessions? Or would you prefer your wife to be obsessed about the Word of God and, and having, um, you know, the, the ornament of a, becoming an ornament of a meek and quiet spirit? Uh, what about technology or makeup? You know, Hollywood movies or music? You know, would you rather uh, your spouse be obsessed with those things or would you rather them be obsessed with the Word of God? You know, what else does open and proactive communication look like? You know, so discuss your goals, you know, things that you want to achieve in life. You know, but make sure your goals align with the Word of God because we have, we have lots of goals in our life. And I, I think share these with your husband um, and share this with your wife, but then talk about them because you, as, at the same time, you need to be open to align yourself to the Word of God. And same with husbands. You may want to you know, achieve something really great in either your career or a business but just make sure you have the Word of God first, your family first, and becoming a spiritual leader first rather than a, you know, you know, a career or a, a business leader. You know, so d discuss your goals. Um, discuss your desires, you know, things you like, you know, your favorite foods. Now, how, do you, how do you expect your husband or your wife to know what you like, you know, what you like to eat for dinner or where, you'd like to, where he, he would want to take you out if you don't share these things with him? You know, if he doesn't know what you like, and, and it's not just on the onus, you know, I think with communication, it's not just on the onus of um, um, the person to always, uh, you know, open up with information. It's also on the onus of the, of the other party to ask, right? So it's a, it's a two, communication is two way. So volunteer information, but at the same time, you need to ask. If you want to know something, you know, you should be able to ask and just, and just talk to your, to your spouse. Um, you know, what about your concerns? If you have concerns or things that you're worried about, you know, you need to, to express these things. Otherwise, um, how is your spouse meant to know um, if you're worried about something, if, if it's financially or spiritually or, or anything, something to do with the children, something to do even with your marriage, like you're concerned with, you know, your relationship or how it's going, you need to discuss these things and talk about it. Now, another thing, you know, talk about your struggles, your struggles in life. You know, don't be so proud that you're not willing to admit it. Don't bottle up these feelings if, if you're struggling with something. Even, for example, with sin. You know, if you are struggling with a certain sin, I think it's very healthy to confess that to your wife. You know, you may not, you know, if you have a close, you know, we talk about confessing your faults one to another, even more so you should confess your faults to your wife. You know, if you're struggling with a certain sin, talk about it with your spouse. Talk about it with your wife. Talk about it with your husband. And also, if you're the person listening to your spouse, you need to be understanding. You need to be compassionate. Don't think, ah, oh, you know, you struggle with that. What are you, an idiot? What are you, stupid? What are you, perverted or whatever? You know, like guys, you know, most of us will struggle with lust. You know, and I think it's healthy if we confess that to our wife. And if, if your husband confesses to you that he struggles with lust or he struggles with, you know, I don't know, porn pornography or whatever, you know, don't just write him off. You know, you, you need to understand that this is something natural for men, that they, they, men do naturally struggle more with their eyes than women do. And women, you have to be compassionate. Just because you don't struggle in that area, don't just think, you know, oh, he's an idiot or whatever. You need to understand this is what men are like and be compassionate. 
And the way you respond to your husband or the way you respond to your wife will um, mean that it's easier for them to, to open up in other areas. Because let's say you share a struggle with your husband, you share a struggle with your wife, and they respond negatively. They shut you down. They make you feel uh, sign insignificant. They make you feel like an idiot. Or are you going to go and share something else the next time? So it's just, just as important as, as it is to share your struggle, it's important how you respond to that struggle, how you respond. You know, try and be compassionate. Try and understand their point of view before just thinking that they're an idiot or whatever. You know? So talk about your struggles. You know, talk about other things, your family, your hobbies, uh, things that are happening in your life. Um, I think you get the point. Just, just talk, I think just talk about everything. Um, you know, I've put here, you know, there shouldn't be situations and, and, you know, we're not perfect because, you know, we're striving for this ideal, right? That we talk about everything. We're not perfect. But we really should be striving for this idea where there shouldn't be situations in your marriage or in your relationship where you're looking at each other and thinking, hey, you didn't tell me this. Because, you know, that happens, right? That happens where, you know, maybe uh, you've, you've told a friend and you haven't told your wife and, and maybe your wife thinks it's important. And you've told a friend because you go to work and you tell all your mates and everything and you, you've sort of vented it, right? You, you felt like you've told everyone. And then maybe that friend tells their wife or whatever or that friend comes over and then you're talking about it and your wife is thinking, well, you didn't tell me about that. You know, or your husband is thinking, you know, they hear it from your wife's friend and you're like, hey, I, that's, pretty, that's a pretty important thing to our family. How come you didn't tell me about it? So this situation shouldn't happen. You know, in a perfect world because you should be communicating with each other you should be talking to each other where you're not having that situation where it's like why, why didn't you talk to me about this you know so just think just think about that when in, in in your marriage or in your relationship and you know I was thinking you know maybe this is God's solution to gossip because people have a tendency to gossip and to talk about other people to other people and maybe this is God's solution to gossip that if you talk to your wife about it, you'll feel like you've vented, you'll feel like you've talked about it, that you've told somebody, and then you don't need to go and tell the world. Maybe it's a bit like fornication, right? Where you, it's something that God has you do with your wife and not with everybody else. Um, and maybe that's his God, his God's solution to gossip. Because you may ask the question, Victor, do, I, do you gossip about us? I do. <laughs> but I only do it to one person, right? I only, I only gossip about you guys to, to my wife. We talk about you guys. Of course. Um, okay, so open and proactive communication. So talk about everything. And, I, and, I, and I, in my opinion, I, I literally mean everything. Talk about everything, your struggles, your desires, your goals, um, what you're thinking, your concerns, everything. 